What's going on, everyone? Welcome back into some more NO1800 with our ultimate guide. All right, following up on the last entry in the series here, we are ready to move on to the investors. Our engineers have everything they need supplied, and I've also gone ahead and given them pocket watches. Very simple chain right here with a clockmaker, our goldsmith, and I'm actually buying the gold ore itself from Eli. I decided for the moment, I don't need a lot of gold ore, so the gold ore that I get from him is going to be more than enough to sustain me for a little while. So let's go ahead and we're going to get some investors coming into the city, and then we're going to talk about the investor tier itself and what all you can expect from it. All right, guys, welcome into the investor phase of the game. The investors are, unless you have the High Life DLC, uh, Tourist DLCs, a couple of those others like that, they are sort of the penultimate culmination of all of your efforts. They are the final residential tier of the old world, and they are the ones that are going to be doing the most for you in terms of income and influence and several different aspects of them. So let's take a look at what all they provide you. The first thing you'll notice is they provide a lot of money. This single investor home with only the basic engineer level goods and the basic engineer level uh, happiness needs gives us 525 coins. Compare that to a fully kitted out engineer home with everything already provided that only gives you 390. So yes, they give you a crap ton of coins. They also provide you with crucial influence. Every investor home on high influence, that's normal difficulty, gives you plus three influence per home. This is not a ticking resource that ticks up over time. It is just a flat amount that gets added into your resource uh, influence resource pool. If you're on advanced difficulty, it is plus two influence. And if you're on uh, expert difficulty, it is plus one influence. So influence and money, that's kind of the two big things they give you. They also unlock several different things uh, that you'll be building. The first is the World's Fair. It is a fairly expensive construct. Uh, it does co uh, cost 300,000 coins to place down the initial foundation and quite a few building materials. And it has multiple stages. This is the first monument that you get access to in the investor tier. Uh, there are other monuments you can build if you have DLCs, such as the airship hangar in the Arctic. The tourists have the Eiffel Tower. Sorry, the Iron Tower. Boop. And uh, Docklands in the Artisan phase. There's several different types of monuments. But this is the one in the base game and the, and the first and only one that you would get access to in the base game itself at Investors. If you have the Seat of Power DLC, you'll also get access to the Palace, which is an extraordinarily expensive building. 5,000 maintenance and 1 million construction cost. And with the Arctic is when you finally unlock gas-fired power plants here. But we're not going to be covering this DLC stuff right now. We're just going to be talking about base game stuff. So what should you do about the World's Fair? Don't build it right now. Okay. Do not place the foundations immediately. And why is that? Well, you need 5,000 investors in order to complete the World's Fair. That is the final stage of the World's Fair needs 5,000 investors. If you don't have those 5,000 investors and you start construction on the World's Fair foundations, and then you have to wait and it pauses construction and you can't restart construction on it, you'll actually get a negative newspaper article that lowers island happiness because the World's Fair has been stalled. So I would not recommend building this thing until you have 5,000 investors, then place it and go through all the stages immediately. So do not place this thing just yet. Now, you'll notice I have champagne turned off. That is because while you're playing, you're probably going to be getting harvest festivals. Harvest festivals will give you champagne as an extra product from uh, different uh, crop farms. I do have it turned off right now because I don't want them to use the champagne until I have champagne going. We also have cigars and chocolate. So as you level up your engineers, you'll probably want to go in and turn these things off. That way they don't take any of it. Uh, we don't have chocolate at the moment over here. Uh, there's my chocolate. <laughs> Wrong tab. Yeah, I'm going to turn off all three of these right here. That way, as we are leveling up and increasing our investors, they don't consume the stock that is uh, currently in 
the warehouse until I have more coming in. I don't want them to get it and then lose access to it uh, because at that point we might get a negative newspaper article. Our income will go all over the place and we, we don't want those things. So be sure to turn these off if you've had harvest festivals and you have some of these goods in storage. Now, the first thing the investors are going to want is champagne. Champagne is a relatively easy production chain to take care of. Uh, the champagne seller itself does supply quite a few investors. You'll likely only need one for a little while. I would recommend building this on your, uh, wherever your island is that has all of your electricity and production. Mine is over here, so I'm going to place this guy right there. The only problem with champagne comes in the form of vineyards. One electrified champagne seller needs eight vineyards okay it does need a lot of vineyards now of course if you have access to the bright harvest dlc you can put tractors on these and bump that down to about three um, it doesn't work out exactly like to an exact number three is slight overproduction but you should you can get away with having three vineyards with which will give you some extra grapes to supply the one champagne seller it also needs a little bit of glass Again, definitely recommend having your glass makers improved by electricity to supply all this kind of stuff, as well as your sand mines. So you'll get the champagne up and running, and then mostly it's just a matter of upgrading a little at a time, keeping a check on all of your other consumer goods and making sure that you have everything supplied that you need. Investors, remember, only need the engineer level goods, so they only need spectacles or glasses and up. They won't need, you know, things like fur coats, rum, sewing machines, canned goods, and so on. So as you upgrade more of your engineers, you're going to need less of those artisan tier goods, which is really, really handy, actually. So I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. We're going to get some champagne up and running. I'm going to get up to unlocking the cigars in the members club, and then we will take a look at our next little bit. So let's take a look at a little trick right here. As we talked about in a previous episode, working conditions is a great way to boost your productivity. I've increased our hunting cabins up by 50%. That's giving me some more productivity from those, so I don't need as many. It is costing us a bit of unhappiness, though. But timber, I already have 750 timber in stock. I don't really need that much more timber anymore. I'm going to be producing enough, and I'm buying some from Archie. So let's bump that down to 50%. That's going to decrease our overall output of our timber mills, or our sawmills, rather, by 50%. But that's fine because I don't need that much. It's also going to give me a bit of happiness back. So now instead of minus three, we're only at minus one. So you can decrease the productivity of anything that you don't need much of. I have sales decreased by 50%. This is giving us an overall of plus two. The tooltip isn't always correct. As you can see, it's saying zero, zero, and zero, but we're getting a plus two. So just ignore the tooltip. Just pay attention to what's up here. So anything you don't need much of, just go ahead and decrease it. I'm going to decrease several things that I know that I don't need a lot of. And just gave myself a tiny amount of happiness. If you are the kind of person that is really obsessed with having your supply and demand bars in the statistics screen absolutely balanced, you can micromanage the absolute crap out of these working conditions right here to have absolutely no overproduction at all possible and just keep playing with this. This is like a min maxer's dream right here on these working conditions. Of course, obviously the other big benefit is you're doing less, you're producing less goods. You don't need as much. Since my sale makers are working at 50% capacity, I don't need as much wool. Since the windows are working at 50% capacity, I don't need as much glass and so on. So anything you decrease the working conditions of, you don't need as much input, which frees it up for other industries. Motor assembly lines, I don't need a lot of motors. So I can take that down by 50% and save myself quite a bit of product right there. So use those working conditions to your favor, increase and decrease as needed. I usually just do them by a flat 50 or 25%. I don't really micromanage it, but if that's something you want to do, go for it and see how well balanced you can make everything. All right, guys, we got to have our grapes up and running and yeah, math is not my strong suit. As most of you know, it actually only takes two vineyards with tractors on it to supply one electrified wine cellar. But you know what? Hey, What's a little extra when you have enough money to supply it all? Who cares? So, yeah, we've got both of these up and running. So let's talk tractors real quick from the Bright Harvest DLC, since these are the first time we have them up and running on our farms. 
Tractors work similar to silos from the farmer stage, except they uh, increase productivity by 200% instead of 100%. You still get an extra good every third cycle, and they decrease workforce needed by 50% really really strong stuff right here so this makes these guys work at 300 percent plus the one every third cycle so an effective 400 percent roughly give or take a few percentages really really nice right there the tractors farms uh the tractor sheds rather do need 20 steel beams and 10 steam motors to be constructed and the fuel station this lovely little guy right here of course, all this is found under the engineer tab under the fuel production chain. The fuel station only needs a single oil well. This is an oil well. A lot of people get confused. They think this is like something with it. No, this is the refinery. You just need one single oil well. So on this island, I hear of four oil springs. I only need one for the fuel station. The other three could be for power plants or a, a power plant rather. So one fuel station needs one oil well and one fuel station can supply 20 tractor sheds okay really really strong 20 tractor sheds is a lot that's a lot of boosted farms it really really cuts down on the number of farms that you have to have overall so we're going to get that those grapes going back we do have the champagne seller up and running kicking out some champagne for our lovely lovely investors and from here, it's just a matter of expansion. You keep upgrading a little at a time, getting all of your stuff unlocked. 750 investors needed for cigars, 1750 for chocolate, and then 5,000 finally for the steam carriages. Under happiness, we have the members club at 750, jewelry at 1750, and gramophones at 3,000. There is no 5,000 unlock for any sort of happiness goods for the investors 3000 is the last unlock right there now while you're expanding your investors don't forget to keep a check on your consumption of everything the investors do consume so much of everything um the engineers have a fairly high consumption rate as it is and the investors it just keeps getting worse with those engineer tier goods especially coffee Anyone who is anyone is going to tell you that coffee is an absolute nightmare to keep supplied. Our coffee need right now is up to seven per minute. Again, don't forget, we're getting about, hmm, what is it right now? So right now we're getting six per minute from Kahina. We're at the late game since we're in the engineer phase. That gives us six per minute on her restock. So six per minute from her, plus we're getting... Uh, Let's see, how much am I making right here? I'm making four per minute. So we're making a total of 10 per minute on the coffee from both purchases and from uh, production ourselves. So it's enough for just a little bit longer. But don't forget to keep up with everything, especially that coffee, like I said, but everything else as well. The engineer stuff is in high consumption by the investors, and you're going to need a lot of it. Now, I have gone ahead and expanded our ex investor population out and unlocked everything except for the gramophones and the steam carriages at 5,000. So now we have chocolate and cigars unlocked. Now, similar to what we did with the coffee, we're going to supply at least the chocolate from Madame Kahina. Uh, we don't need much chocolate right now. If we go and we take a look how much we need. I have it turned off. I got to turn it on to see it. Oopsie. There we go. We need two per minute. That's not bad at all. She supplies six per minute. So that should be all we have to have. I do already have my trade route set up to buy the chocolate, buying 50 chocolate out of pop at only 76 coins each. So that's going to be enough right there to last us quite a while on the chocolate until I have our obreros expanded and we can produce that ourselves. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock that and let them start consuming it. Now, Cigars are a little different story. Cigars, as you can see, are insanely expensive. They cost 2000 per ton. Not going to be buying cigars from Madame Kahina. That's just too much money. The 200 is a little cutting it. We're not going to, to go up to 2000 for it. I just, I think that's a little bit much. So instead, what we're going to do is we are going to pop over to the New World now. 
and we are going to expand our Abrero population and get ourselves up to the amount that we need to unlock the cigars, which is 1,000 Obreros. So again, we're going to have to shift our focus to another region for a little while. The old world is perfectly fine. It has everything running smoothly. Everything is coming in. We're not short of any goods. So I am comfortable leaving that region behind to come to the new world for a little while and work on this. If your old world region is not stable, you get it stabilized before you leave. Don't try to jump around between regions. That's a big mistake a lot of people do is they try to hop around constantly. Focus on one thing at a time. I stayed in the old world for a little while, got things stabilized there, got everything taken care of, made sure everything was good. Then I said, okay, time to focus on the next thing, which is I want to get up and unlock all of the stuff for the Obreros. So I'm going to take some time, expand our Ornolero workforce, get all of this upgraded, unlock everything. Not going to build anything yet, just going to get the unlocks going. And then we will take a look and see what we have to do next. All right, so we have gotten up to having the cigars unlocked. So this is where the, my first little bit of tricks and stuff will come from. With cigars, I do not like making the wood veneers here in this region. The reasoning is kind of the similar one for everything else I've talked about in this region, especially like the brick factories. Space and workforce. You need 100 Abreros to work a marquetry workshop in the New World. Now, again, if you're playing with items and things like that in trade unions or importing stuff from Docklands or however you're doing it, there's lots of different ways to get wood veneers. Go ahead and do that. But if you're trying to produce them yourself, I would not produce them directly here in this region because you need those precious, precious Obreros for things such as the cigar factories and later on the stuff for chocolate factories. You can produce these in the old world faster because you can electrify them so you'll get more from them. So what I would recommend doing is setting these up in the old world, electrify them, and then the route that you're going to use to bring the cigars to your island in the old world have them pick up wood veneers and bring them back for processing into the cigar factory here. That way you're getting a little more use out of it and you're not wasting any space in this region on or on the marquetry workshops. So I'm going to show you what I think is the first instance where you should always have a cargo ship running. And that is a very particular trade route. I'm going to take this guy right here, our very first cargo ship, and he's not going to be running anything for us. What I'm going to have him do is buy everything from her. She sells six different goods that are all very useful. We're going to buy everything from her. Take it all to our main island. She sells sugarcane, cotton fabric, tobacco, cocoa, sugar, and pearls. All very useful goods, and they're all relatively cheap. So we're going to take all of those back up here and drop all of that stuff off. This is the first time when I definitely think having a cargo ship on a trade route to an AI is really useful. You're going to want all of these goods. She sells them all relatively cheap as well. We go take a look at her harbor. Yeah. Six coins, 10, 16, 76, 20, 100 are the most expensive thing, honestly, is just the tobacco. That's it. Buy all of this stuff. You can even start buying things like the sugar cane and the cotton fabric early on in the game. That way you're supplementing your sugar cane need on your islands for rum, as well as the cotton fabric. And you can use that cotton fabric and then take that over to the old world for your fur coats. All of this stuff right here is available. I would definitely unlock this stuff and get it uh, buying and sending off to your island as soon as possible or just wait for a cargo ship and get all of it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this tobacco right here and start producing my cigars using the tobacco that she supplies. Plus, we're going to get some tobacco farms set up over here on this island right here and ship it back over here to uh, Pombo and start making the cigars with a combination of what she sells and what we produce. All right, we got everything up and running for this. We've got three tobacco farms or tobacco plantations right here. We do have a small one. He's not here yet. A schooner that is coming down to um, move the tobacco from this island over here to Pombo, our main island. 
Of course, we have our cargo ship down here. He's getting ready to go and buy all of the goodies. If I can speed the game up. He's getting ready to come down and buy all the goodies down here to start bringing those down. And last but not least, we do have a new route. That is picking up the cigars from Pombo, taking them back to Flaley, picking up the, uh, the wood veneers, and dropping those off on Pombo. Now, for this route, we are using some of these little buttons over here. We're using discard cargo. That is because if he goes to Flaley and he goes to drop off all of the cigars, but he can't drop them all off and some of these don't get deposited, he might not be able to pick up all the wood veneers that we need. Eventually, what can happen is these cargo slots get completely filled up and he's never able to pick up the wood veneers and the wood veneers will never come back to Pombo. So what we want to do is tell it to discard cargo and dump the cigars overboard so I can pick up wood veneers and there is no stop in the route. Now, some people prefer wait to unload. That's perfectly fine if you want to use it. The only problem with wait to unload is your sh the uh, trading ship will sit at the pier and literally wait. And it can take a long time. If you are not consuming very many, then it's going to take... So, let's see. Let's, let's, let's take some math for an example here. If I have 100 tons of cigars sitting on the ship that need to be unloaded, and he can only unload 25, so we have 75 left to be unloaded, but they're only consuming 5 per minute... Okay, if they're only consuming five per minute, that is 15 minutes. That's 15 minutes of sitting at a pier doing nothing. In the meantime, you may run out of marquetry workshop items, the wood veneers, uh, on Pombo. So, I don't recommend using weight to unload. You're tying up piers for no reason. The more weight to unload you have, the more piers that you need in order to uh, satisfy that. I don't recommend using it. I like my trade routes moving continuously. Now, alternatively, what you could do with this route is go to, let's say, the old world. Uh, who's someone nearby? We could, could, we could go right here. And we could make this a little more complicated, okay? We could unload there, tell it to go and unload here, go back to Flaley, then load these, and then they'll go back and unload those up here. This is an alternative way of doing it. In this case, he's going to drop off everything he can there, then he'll go to the Emporium, sell the excess, then go back to Flaley, pick up those wood veneers, and then go and drop them off at Pombo. And then he can either discard cargo, or we could have another ship coming to pick up the excess wood, any excess wood veneers on Pombo and selling them somewhere else. Or you can make this thing even more complicated and have him go to another island. You, you get the point. Okay, you get the point. There's lots of different things you could do with it. Uh, for my purposes, I don't like doing that. I'm just going to tell him to pick these up Drop them off. Use discard cargo. It's nice. It's clean. It's easy. It's done. I don't have to do anything crazy with it. That gets the cigars all up and running. I'll have all my cigars coming in and everything will be lovely. And I'm going to be really, really happy. All right. And that is it for me today, guys. I hope this video helped you out a little bit. Showed you how to get through that early investor stage. Give you a few tips and tricks along the way to succeed with all of that. As you can see, we're making a ton of money right now. Doing pretty well. Of course, not a ton. Comparable to some things. Later on, you'll make a lot more. But of course, our population is still rather low. We're only at 12,000 global population. So we have not done a lot of population expansion. We've been pretty minimal with it and still succeeded and done very well for ourselves with that guys thank you so so much for watching i hope this video was awesome for you if it was be sure to leave me a like and a comment down below i'll see you in the next one where we are going to kind of go through and finish up the investor phase and get the world's fair completed and talk about a few more tips and tricks to get you through the base stuff and then we'll be moving on to more advanced things later on until then take care <laughs>